At COP26, held in Glasgow, UK this month, the IAEA, alongside youth groups, countries and other organisations, helped to put nuclear science and technology on the agenda. Throughout the conference, we were able to continue a dialogue with those with whom we already had it. And we were also able to start and to establish new partnerships. More and more countries, more and more groups are looking at nuclear as an evident part of the solution. Though most of the UN's climate conference was focused on other solutions to the crisis, there was a noticeable shift in interest towards nuclear technologies. The IAEA Director General was interviewed on site by major media outlets, as well as live in the Action Hub by a Financial Times journalist. This high-profile discussion attracted a small group of anti-nuclear protesters, offering the opportunity for IAEA experts to continue the debate afterwards. Director General Grossi also met with dozens of world leaders and decision makers to discuss ways their countries and regions could benefit from nuclear science and its applications in the fight against climate change. This included climate envoys, heads of state and leaders of international organizations. Even today, the nuclear energy is contributing uh, to about 20% of production of electricity in the UNEC region. So uh, we do, we do, we call it the deep dives into individual elements of the energy mix. We did with fossils, we did with uh, renewables. Uh, so we did also with the nuclear energy and we have the scientific proofs that uh, nuclear energy is uh, leading to decarbonization of uh, the whole energy production. The IAEA organized high level events promoting the benefits of low carbon nuclear energy as well as discussing ways that nuclear science can help countries adapt to and measure climate change. IAEA experts also spoke at events held by other partners, including one on Energy Day run by the United Kingdom, this year's host country. Young environmentalists were also visibly advocating for nuclear power, with eye-catching symbols and scientific facts. I think there's only actually a minority of people who are locked in anti-nuclear ideology. I find most people are receptive to it. Every event I do, I get lots of people who are on the fence or previously on the fence, and they come and they ask questions and they change their mind. So it's actually very easy to do. I think it's just an issue of people don't talk about it, and it's really important to have those conversations. The activist nuclear flash mob attracted attention on the streets of Glasgow. and their facts about radioactive bananas and uranium pellets the size of gummy bears made many COP attendees stop and listen. To engage social media audiences, the IAEA conducted live interviews with environmental activists and experts, one of whom is a former opera singer who now leads a grassroots organization that fights to save nuclear plants from being replaced by fossil fuels. Nuclear power holds the key to universal prosperity. It is nuclear energy we must embrace for the human race. On Youth Day, the IAEA ran a shared event with the Nuclear Institute's Young Generation Network, where Director General Grossi awarded student Claire Lee a prize for winning the Net Zero competition with her group's concept for decarbonizing the port of Singapore using nuclear power. The conceptions that a lot of the general public has, which is like um, the big scary nuclear accidents. But I think after going through my internship, I realized that I think nuclear is a very stable and clean form of baseload energy. And it is, it, you do need it as part of the energy mix if you want to have a very reliable like, form of clean energy. A quick straw poll of a small sample of COP attendees showed a few were staunchly pro-nuclear power, a few were still strongly anti, but most were interested in all solutions and looking to hear more information. Unless we manage to know how to end the West, I'll be sketchy. I think the biggest, the biggest challenge that we have nowadays is the question of safety, but I think that if we, if we improve, we can uh, certainly use nuclear power. 
I don't know enough about it to have a real opinion about it. We need to consider always science as a base. Then less passion and more science is what I believe we need. There are a lot of scientists who are for that and I'm, uh, I'm, you know, tend to believe them. I think proper education, right education about it is very important. Even a common public should be told about this in some way that they understand. Uh, whenever whenever we take, make a conscious choice, we have to look to into, take into account the both negatives and the positives and ensure that we have very minimal impact on the environment. Nuclear energy is a new power and we don't have installed yet. But uh, it is uh, in some part necessary. Using nuclear power may be uh, a solution, you know. For now, the world uh, has to think quickly. This was only the second time the IAEA, as the voice for nuclear science, attended the Global Climate Change Conference.